Okay, so what's going on here? I've got a little model with six inputs and it's a kind of lifetime regular saving model, which incidentally, completely free to download. And I suggest that you do because you can work along with what I'm doing. Don't want your details or anything. Have it straight to your PC or whatever you're working on and play around. So what does it do? So we can say, well, what percentage of our wages are we going to save? So let's, yeah, let's leave that at 10%. What's our savings growth rate? Well, it might be a little bit lower, 4%. What's our wage inflation? 2%. What age are we? Well, if only I was 25 still, eh? But let's just go 30 for the moment. When am I going to stop work? Well, I don't want to work till I'm 65. I'm going to stop with 30. What am I on? Well, I don't know. It depends what currency you're working with. But let's just go with 50 for the moment. Right, so if I do that, I'm going to have less than 200 grand. Right, not great. I might want to be a millionaire. Right, what am I going to have to save under that scenario? Anyway, you get the gist. Little little model here. This These growths are based off of these inputs. Now, I, when I get something, I might, I might play around with this and say, right, OK, let's, uh, let's do something like uh, 25 there. Oh, let's carry on working till I'm 55, 800 grand. Maybe I can get a few more pay rises. Oh, there we go. Right, 4.5. Yeah, that hits my millionaire status. That's what I want. I want to be a millionaire. Right, those are perfect sayings. That's what I want to do. Right, I want to record those. And I want those available on this drop down list here so that I can select them again. So what this model does is I can now record these and it takes advantage of a built-in Excel feature called scenarios. So you go to data, what if scenario manager. You can see there's my current ones. Now I'm going to add a scenario. What I call this uh, millionaire, right? Let's call it millionaire, uh, millionaire plan. Um, Right, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, created by it for Excel, I don't really need that. Okay, so that's my millionaire plan, that's the settings. Hit okay. Show doesn't really matter. Right, show there. So you could do this. So this is a great little feature. But the key thing is, right, now my millionaire plan's in the drop down list. How did that happen? Right. <laughs> I'm going to show you how I've set this up. So, on the developer tab, risk of repeating myself for the thousandth time, don't have a developer tab, in case you've been watching my videos, sorry about this. Right, click on customize quick access toolbar, more commands, customize the ribbon, tick developer tab, and hit OK. Right, you've got it. Go into design mode, insert an active X drop down box or combo box and I'm just going to draw one over here at random now uh, while we're using this um, rather than sort of data validation lists or or the other type of drop down box form control but the reason is we need to make use of uh, the event driven processes that run off of this box which makes it quite useful because what we need to do is we're going to programmatically populate that list only when it's clicked. And the way that we're going to do that is it's going to go look at all the scenarios that are built into this spreadsheet and add their names to the drop down list. And then when it's clicked, show those, show that scenario. This is effectively a little macro that's doing automatically what we just did here. So it's the equivalent of going right. What if analysis, scenario manager, picking that one, hitting show, hitting close. So it's effectively a program that does that for you whenever you click on this. So that's what we're going to do. Right. Now, let's just uh, delete that one. And I'll show you how to set this one up because I could just point to it quite easily. Right. So let's... Uh, quite long this isn't it but we don't, I'll show you a bit at a time let's go categorized now we can just chuck it down here we can see it all right so 
what are our key things here? So, simple stuff. I've changed the border color to black and I've put a border on it, single border on it. Right. Um, the special effect I've changed to flat because that looks better in a worksheet and it gives you more room for your font. And very important, this one actually, the style needs to be a drop down list because otherwise anyone can type into that anything they like. And if that scenario doesn't exist, the code's going to throw it out and throw a wobbler and uh, we don't want to have to put error handling in the code or anything like that. Right, I think that's it for there. Uh, data, uh, not too bad. One thing we just need to do is make sure that we don't have, has it got anything on here? Probably on miscellaneous, yeah, miscellaneous. Do This must be empty, list field range, because otherwise it's going to try and populate whatever's in there. And we don't need a link cell either, but just need to make sure that is blank because we're going to programmatically fill this list. And that's something I happen to know generates an error if there's anything in that box. The font, incidentally, you tend to have to knock it down one from whatever your row standard row font size is. And I don't know why that is. It's just that the way it positions your font in the box ends to cut off things if they're if they're um if you set that eleven for example we cut the bottom of every Y and G and all of this sort of stuff. So okay so that's about it for that setup. Get rid of that. So if we right click on here and view code you can see the code that I've put into it. Now I this is free, you know, download this, copy and paste it in, it will it will work. Well it won't work straight away. We need a couple of things we need to do. So I'm going to recreate this code from scratch. So if I move this down off of um well let's comment it out. Just do that a second. And then I'm going to insert a bit of space and I'll show you how you would create it from scratch. So if we go combo box one difficult to put it down there and uh, drop button click so let's try do that delete that put it up there you can see I put a little reminder for myself saying sure the combo box list mode is set right so this is the click event what am I gonna do well the main thing we need to do is populate this list when it's clicked now that would be and then show the scenario uh, on a change event. In other words, when the combo box changes, show whichever scenario was picked. Nice and simple, would be great if only it blooming worked. For some strange reason, the way Excel executes this event is when the drop down box is clicked, it drops the list down. Fine, when you pick something, it drops the list up and that is treated as another click event. And runs a macro again <laughs> which means that if in this code you say oh change the list to this new list they click on it you get the list looks great you pick the list and then all it does is blank it and repopulate it again and so you never get to actually choose any item from the list you look like you choose it and then it just goes blank again so we need this sort of um we need to detect whether the list is coming down going up and what I do in order to do that, uh, where is it here? Right, so little hidden cell under there. It's not hidden, it's just under the combo box. Put it anywhere, but the key thing is give it a name range name. I called it n tag. So just type, click on any cell, for example, and just type in here. As long as you click enter, it'll register that name. And that way, if I kind of insert a row up here, for example, this whole thing will still work. You know, I get out of developer mode. It's still going to work. Uh, yeah. Oh, I blanked out the code. <laughs> That's why it doesn't work. But it would still work if uh, someone introduces uh, an extra row or column or whatever because we reference the named range of the cell rather than the cell like sort of J6 or whatever it was, right. So what we can do is uh, every time we run the code, times that by negative one. So when we click down, 
populates the list, code changes to negative, that number changes to negative one. Next time the code, so then when the list closes, the code runs again, that tag is negative one. So we can make sure that it only populates the list when it's number one and it shows scenarios when it's minus one. And as long as we're always times in that number by negative one and no one comes in and deletes it or anything, everything's gonna work fine. So let's put that in first. So and the way we do that is we just say range n tags value uh, equals one, then do that. Else we're gonna do something else and if so that's our basic structure and then what we're going to do is at the bottom here, we're going to say that that equals itself times minus one. So that way, so I'll just put um, list down there as a comment, just so that we see what's happening. List up, and then that is uh, change the tag. So that way, as long as we've set our initial condition as one, when we click down, this code will run, whatever code we put in uh, here will run. And when it goes up, it will run, because the value will be minus one, it will run that. And then that code, that little statement now will keep flipping it between one and minus one. Right, job done there. So what are we going to do when the list comes down? We're going to populate it with all the scenarios that are built into the spreadsheet. How are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to just cheat a second and copy the code from here. Um, and then unpopulate. Oh, no, let's check it, sorry. So let's do that and un. Right, so we're going to clear the current list. Combo box one dot clear. And obviously it's combo box one because it's called combo box one. Whatever you call it, doesn't matter as long as it's that dot clear. How do you find out what it's called? Uh, design mode, click on there, right click properties. Um, if you go alphabetical, it's the first thing, the name. Yeah, combo box one. Right. So we'll clear it. Then what do we do? Right, this is the magic. We're going to search through all the scenarios on the active sheet. So we do that by creating a little for next loop. So for each, I've called it O scenario, it doesn't matter what you call it, you can call it X if you like, any variable name. So for each scenario in the active sheet scenario, add the name of it to the combo box, right? Now bear in mind, we've just cleared the combo box. So if we didn't clear the combo box, this combo box would just get longer and longer and longer every time we clicked on it. So that's all that does, right? So that's, that's fantastic. So we now have our list, right? So the list is now, so that's what happens when you click down. What happens when you click back up? Well, we need to show our, show our scenario. So again, um, Let's just, well, the main code is this. Let's just put that in a second here, right. So we're gonna say, when the list goes up, show the scenario. So active sheet got scenario. The scenario name, which is just whatever value is now in the combo box, dot show. Now, if I was to run that, there's a possible way we could get an error. Now I'll show you what it is. So this is, so that's 20%. 15%, see it's working, millionaire plan, that would go definitely. Right, so that's all great, but what if I say, actually I don't want to choose anything? Ooh, error. I debug on that, you can see it's because the value in the combo box is nothing, and it's trying to show a scenario with no name. It's not gonna be able to do it, so we just need to trap that error, and uh, let's just end it. God dear me, right. And the way we do that, is we just detect, just put on here, if that is not equal to nothing, then do it, then show it. And by default, because if it is equal to nothing, it won't do anything. 
apart from change that tag. So that'll work. That's our little macro as it happens, because this is the only thing. It wouldn't really matter if that was run every time anyway. I think that's what I've done on the original code actually. But yeah, so this will now mean that Ah, right. Now, after you get uh, <laughs> said, why is that wrong? The reason is because our initial tag there is minus one. So it's doing the exact opposite of what we want. So that can happen when you crash out of VBA code. You can get some of these initial settings wrong. So let's reset that to one. And now we're on our, let's go for a 10% growth. Right, yeah, you can see that's working. Millionaire plan, yeah, that's working. So let's uh, think about adding another scenario now, check it's all working. So what about if we say, well, we, you know, let's say, no, oh, we might be able to go to 5% wage inflation, could stop working at, could we stop working at 53? Not quite, uh, 54, what if, yeah, so that's our revised millionaire plan. Um, I want to stop working at 50 though, so let's say 28%, uh, 30%, not quite working here, 32. Just trying to get to something that's going to get right. That's as near as damn it a million, isn't it? Right, so I'm going to say save that as a new scenario. What if scenario manager add it? Just call it a uh, new millionaire, new million plan, right? Uh, create it, hit OK, uh, close. Key thing is, does it occur in the drop down? Yes. So there you have it. That's how you go about adding, changing multiple entries at once using a drop down. So effectively, we're using the shortcut of the scenario manager in Excel to do it. Hope that was useful. Um, download the spreadsheet and look at the code. Just a quick warning, that one thing in the code, if you've got a model, which you probably have, that's spanning lots of different sheets, uh, it's worth just before the combo box code, putting the sheet name. So for example, you just put sheet one dot combo box and that way and every time you um that way if you've got another combo box on another sheet called combo called combo box one you could say you know it's just gonna avoid a bit of confusion so a bit of a little bit of best practice there but other than that you know it's gonna be it's gonna work fine on multi-sheet models incredibly complex you could have numerous items in these scenarios you could have it changing cells all over the place, but they do rely on all your inputs being on the same sheet. So if they're not currently on the same sheet, either move them to the same sheet or have them linking back to something on a single sheet. All right, I hope that's helpful. If you want to know much more about drop down boxes and how you can do really clever stuff with them, I've got loads of videos out on this now. So check those out. Uh, should be links in the description. I think it's probably playlist by now set up as well. Have a look round up for Excel and I'll see you soon.